If you want, you can go ahead and go with me to Galatians chapter number one. Galatians chapter number one. And in Galatians one, it talks about people preaching another gospel. It says in Galatians one and verse six, when you get there, Galatians 1, and you can look at verse 6, and it says, I marvel that ye are so soon, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that is called that from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there are some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, then that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we, said, as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that ye have received, let him be accursed. The Bible is really clear. If some guy or if an angel comes unto you and starts preaching some other gospel, let it be a curse. You know, let that person, if someone tell, tells you that some angel came and told them some gospel and they want you to listen to them, let that person be a curse. And the principle I want to get at is that not everyone who names the name of Christ is saved. And there are people who try to creep in churches like these to deceive other Christians. Because think about it like this. We've already fought the, the repent of your sins crowd. I don't think any repent of your sins person, I mean, obviously there are going to be people or infiltrators who are going to try coming in here, but they're not going to deceive anyone in this church because that's a thing that we take a really hard stance on. The devil is going to get crafty in the things he does. And what the devil is going to do is he's not going to just send some repent of your sins person or some Calvinist in here. He's going to send someone who has the right gospel to try to deceive people in this church. He's going to send some guy who says the right things. And that person is going to give you all the right answers when you try to question about salvation. They're going to say salvation is eternal, that it can't be lost, that it's not by works. But the thing is, you want to know what I believe that person is? They're pointing to another Jesus, just like the modalists. And that's the people I think of the most when I think of this, is that the modalists are really deceptive because the modalists try to say, oh, look at all the stuff I agree with you on. I agree that Jesus Christ is God. I agree with you that um, salvation is by faith, that it's, it's not by works, that it's eternal. But what are they pointing you to? They're pointing you to a totally different Jesus, right. a Jesus that doesn't save, a Jesus that is a deceptive Jesus that says he's God the Father. Right. It's a lot of garbage, but people need to understand that there's people, and that's why I kept emphasizing, it says, but he lied unto him. Now, think of our lives are written like the Bible, and whenever you're talking to someone, and it says that this person, you're talking to them, you're questioning about the gospel, and they give you all the right answers, but then that narrator of your life says, but he lied unto him. And that probably happens way more often than we think, where people are lying to us, trying to deceive us. And that's something we need to be really, really careful about. Because the devil knows that, like I said earlier, he's not going to just send all these false prophets in where they're, they're going to sit there and say things that we're just totally against. He's going to send someone in that's just going to plain out or plain out lie to us so that they can come in and try to creep in and deceive people in the church. This is another reason why I don't believe homos can get saved. And when you give the gospel to a homo and the homo gives you all the right answers after you're finished pre presenting the gospel to him, I believe that homo is just lying to you. That's it's that simple. And I believe that they're just trying to get in churches just and, and creep in and try to molest people. And that's why they're going to say that they're going to because what is a homo? What did they ultimately do? They rejected the gospel. Therefore, since they have rejected the gospel, that person has become a reprobate. Well, Amen. then if they've rejected the gospel, they have to know the gospel to reject it. So there's probably many homos out there who can quote to you the gospel word for word. They know what to say. They know exactly what to, that, what to, te what to tell you so that they can creep into a church like this and end up trying to do something, you know, molest some kid or do something wicked to someone in this church. So we need to be aware of that. We, not, we shouldn't just be people. People who just trust everyone. Now, obviously, we shouldn't. We should give people the benefit of the doubt. You know, I'm not sitting there saying go on a witch hunt and just sit there and think everyone is unsaved in this room and yeah, I can't trust anyone. I can't trust my wife. I can't trust my kids. No, it shouldn't be like that. You should obviously give everyone the benefit of the doubt. But there is a way to try the spirits. The Bible says in First John chapter number four, it says, "Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world." So the reason I'm bringing that up, and I kind of emphasize, because I know you guys are like, why is he reading through 1 Kings chapter number 13? Because there is a principle that you can understand from that chapter. And I just want you to understand that really well. Because what did the man of God do? He ended up getting the word of God. He heard the word of God himself. He knew what the word of God said. 
But then you have a false prophet or a prophet that comes and says some angel told me something totally different. What was his issue is that God didn't trust in the word of God. He didn't try the guy's spirit from what God told him. And that's the problem we as a lot of Christians end up uh, going through is that we don't try the spirits with the word of God. We think if someone's just a nice person, we think if someone just comes to our church and they go soul winning with us, that that person is automatically saved and they're a good person. They can never, they'll never harm a fly. Well, we need to be, get the Bible and make sure we try the spirit. And like I, I'm bringing up modalism again is because they can say that they believe everything like us. And that's what if you want to know what a, a false prophet or you, if you want to know if someone's a false prophet, if they say, oh, we believe the same thing as you guys. But that's like Mormons say that right. Jehovah's Witness say that. And they obviously don't believe the same things we do. They believe something totally different. But. Just thinking about the Molus, for, for instance, is that they say, oh, we believe everything just like you. And what do they try to do? They try to creep in and spread their false Molus doctrine so that they can deceive people. And look at all the wicked people who have been kicked out of faithful word. And look at all the trouble they're causing on the Internet. Sitting there railing on pastor, railing on all these different good pastors in our movement. And they're sitting there trying to deceive people and get people taken out of good churches to go to their wicked, hell-bound church. So it's something we need to be careful of. And you guys don't want to see that happen at this church because it's not a matter of if a false prophet's going to come in here it's a matter of when because a false prophet will come in here but we just don't know when it's going to happen that's the thing about it and you want to be alert to not just trust everybody just because they come to this church or because they're a nice guy or because they go soul winning i went soul winning with all the molas you know i trusted them i thought they were good people even i mean pastor put a lot of stock in tyler baker thinking that he i mean he made him the deacon so we trusted these people, but they turned out to be frauds. They turned out to be deceivers and really wicked people. So it's something you need to be aware about. Just don't trust everyone. That's why, you know, and something that's really emphasized, don't just leave your kids with anybody. You know, you can't just trust people with your kids. I'll trust people with my gun more than I trust people with my kids because I'm not going to give my kids away. You can take my gun or whatever. Who cares? Even shoot me with it. But you're not going to take my kid away because you just can't trust people like that or you can't just trust people 